All right, hello my good friends. Let me kick off this evening's video with the official hashtag joyant and jubilant hello. Hope everyone is doing well out there. As always, these evening recaps, these market mutterings, these charts I share with you is all the attempt for me to share my two decades of trading experience with you guys. Take a grope in the murkiness, try to make some sense out of the stock market, and I hope with whatever we discuss, I can put some money in your pocket. And man, I know what the thumbnail said. It said, let's go all in on the cues and buy these five stocks. There's going to be more. I got a whole list of them. I had to write them down so I didn't forget a few guys. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, I literally don't mean to go all in on the cues. That's dumb. However, I do feel that we have a buy signal and it appears, or at least from a risk versus reward standpoint, that some of these stocks, we should give them a go. There's a great opportunity for us to make some money. And if you've been sitting here very patient with some of these growth stocks, with some of these higher beta names, they confirmed some channels today that I think are very important that give us a balance of possibly seeing a multiple day upswing on them. We're going to go over that. Now, when we were looking at these cues in particular, what we were talking about was could they eventually break a range? Now, you've got to look at two sides. So when you guys are trading, you should always try to understand what does the other side think about this trade. So if you're long, you have to put yourself in the position of a short seller. What would a short seller do if they were in this trade? If you're a short seller, you would ask yourself, what is a long person doing on this trade? That helps you get a bias from both angles. It also helps you understand how a trade might work out. Having said that, this is the way that I look at it. During this whole up run, you go back over here to the, the, the left side of the chart and you're going to see that the cues have just been methodically and relentlessly moving upward since March. And there's been a lot of top callers in this market. And they're always going to be top callers when you get asset prices inflated. And as we said before, it's not uncommon to see them correct. So let's put yourself in the shoes of a short seller that has been shorting this thing maybe since the election or since December or the beginning of the year, and they're constantly underwater. Well, finally, they get an opportunity to get their, their day in the sun. They get an opportunity where the asset does decrease in price and their short appears to look very good. And you see this across the board in many of those stocks. But then what happens is it just stops, like the alpha stops. It just doesn't continue to grind downwards and downwards. In fact, it spends the next 20 days just haggling back and forth. Now, not only is that frustrating to longs that tried to buy the dip, but that is seriously frustrating to shorts who perhaps could still be underwater with average prices here, looking for this second wave move, or the short sellers who really got towards the top now are faced with possibly having to cover this position. Now, when you see charts that way, there is a chance if we finally break this range, which we're getting very close to it, the market's still open as I'm doing this. We talked about this box right here. We are now at the upper area. I think we will see this try to continue just for the sheer fact of this. Not only does it look good technically, but way, the way you translate this chart or the way that I'm translating this chart is that bears have had enough time to sell this asset off. There's been enough bad news. There's been enough hits. There's been enough doom and gloom. There's been enough negativity to press this lower. It simply just will not do it. And we've also talked about the discrepancy between the this indice as well as the Dow and as well as the S&P. And I think maybe before I get done doing this, we might have actually hit. Let's take a look on the ES. I was talking about 4,000. I've been saying that for a while. We're very, very close to that. So we're 3983.75 here on, on the futures. I would imagine this, this gets done. So with those discrepancies, I really think what we're going to do is we're going to see these cues break out and at least try to make a challenge. Maybe we don't get back up to the highs, but I think you're at least going to see it try to make a challenge there. Let's open this chart up. Let me move that down just a little bit. The area that you're looking for is just is roughly right in here, these spaces. I think we at least trade up through there. There's a little bit of room up there. I think we can move up there. If possibly we can get a close above that, then we should be trading back up here. This 338.19 all-time high should come back into the play. Nonetheless, it looks like that's the next move in the sequence. Whether we go back to all-time highs is another story, but the next, next point of the sequence looks like we're going higher. Now, that's opened the door to a ton. I mean, a ton of stocks. I can only mention a few for the sake of time. But I have to say here at this point, there are, are a lot of them. I had to write them down. I'm going to go through these relatively quickly for the sake of time, but you're going to see the same repetitive pattern. 
I'm looking at a lot of these high growth, great earnings, quarter after quarter fund accumulated stocks that are just buried and have been buried on their 200 day moving averages. Now, one thing I want you to understand about this is I'm not, I'm not saying we're going to go back to the old days. When I'm talking about the old days, the last few months is anytime you bought a dip, you were rewarded with a brand new, fresh all time high. I'm not saying that the queues are going to go back to all time highs or some of these stocks are going to retrace 40% over the next two months. But I do believe just straight risk versus reward probabilities of upward moves from here until the very end of the week or into the early parts of next week. There's some great cash flow and I want to be a little bit aggressive in some of these names I do hold. And I'm opening up positions probably before the market. Uh, number one here is Coop. This one is seriously on the on the bear trend, way below its 200 moving average. I normally don't like to get long bear, but risk versus reward. You have a very tight, tight risk on it. Again, go through these charts, pick the ones that you feel fit your profile, and go with those. I, I think you can you long it here. You got to stop under here. Target would be somewhere close to this 200 moving average. So let me kind of open this up to give you numbers to talk about so you can so I can highlight, excuse me, the risk versus reward. So if we're looking at that, we're, we're, we're talking roughly 254 entry price. These are just rough estimates. I know it's pretty wide for some people, but I'm also going to get to some cheaper stocks, different prices. So just kind of hear me out here. And you got maybe a 240 stop. So you're risking about 14 bucks here. First target is 302. So you can see already, you're, you're, you're risking about 14 bucks for 30. Uh, that would be a good enough target back to this 200 day moving average. You never know, maybe things change and I'm wrong with the all time highs and maybe it moves up here. You still have to keep that on the table. But first step is first, the nearest piece of resistance is the 300. So we're giving up basically 14 here for 30. I like that risk versus reward. We're gonna go through a couple of these. Again, some are cheaper than others. I have Vuzi, which is a cheaper stock. I featured this one a couple of weeks ago. Um, I am long this one. I, I really, really like this, this stock. I had it actually at $8. I ended up buying it back again. Um, it's a little stretchy here right now, but the price makes it attractive. You know, you're longing here, you're stopping at 20, you're giving up about $5. I think you you cruise through 30 and then possibly I think this is one of those ones that can in fact go through through the highs. It's very very aggressive. It reminds me a lot of Fubo before it busted out 30 bucks. I'm not saying that one is going to do it, but I do like Vuzi here. Big time Momo stock fits the price. Keep that one on your watch list. All of these that I show stops must be under those lows because if they're if, if any of these lose these levels, who knows where they're going to end up? They're going to go a lot further. Pay C, this one's a little bit more expensive, a little bit more thin. Uh, I didn't type it in there. Or pay P A Y C. Let's see. Right here, uh, holding the 20, uh, 200, excuse me, here's your 200 day moving average. It held that and bounced, retested that. It's got one, two, three, four days in a row holding this 358. You can long here 370s, stop 358. So again, you're, you're, you're down to sometimes 12 bucks, 13 bucks. Now that sound, it sound like a lot, and it is. But on big names like this, big beta, that's, that's not a lot of risk to take on a swing trade. 450 is the first target. So I mean, you're talking maybe 60 to $70 worth of potential profit in this name. So you can see what I'm talking about. Well, these things are worth taking a shot just for the reward that you, you may end up getting on it. So I really like the way Pacey looks. Some of these I've already featured. I believe I've talked about Okta. Sorry, I'm just speeding through these. You're going to see the same thing. Um, these are all daily charts, all considered swings, slightly under the 200, but you long it here. Uh, you're stopping. You're looking at maybe $16. 250 is the first target. The second is 275 and then ultimately 294 just kind of walk them up the ladder so when you guys are looking at these especially your targets i'll make this easy because they're all going to be the same when you're trading something you can always have a target of this you can always look at this is the max target if you're buying here the standard deviation is it's trading from this level ultimately back up to this level but that's quite some distance 
Now, on that road towards that goal, you are going to have resistance areas, shorter term, longer term, medium term resistances. So when you look at it, you do have a pivot right here that will be, need to be taken into consideration. You have one here that will need to be taken into consideration and then one here. So what does that mean to you traders? And I think this is great for everyone to, to, to understand when it comes to charts. That if you get up here and you start to struggle for a few days, that doesn't necessarily mean your trade is over. It just means it's it, it's trying to conquer that piece of a resistance. Sometimes they do us a favor and blow right through that resistance and move to the next one. Other times they struggle. The best thing you can do as a trader is be prepared for a, you know a little bit of hesit a little bit of resistance. Be prepared for resistance in your trading through those levels. And then, of course, you've got this level and this level. So just kind of walk it up the ladder one step at a time. I like Okta here. I also have Fubo. This is one I did just mention earlier, one I've been in before. Um, this is all part of that hedge fund unwinding. So you may have a little bit of a struggle here with this one, but it's laying on its 200 moving average. This is also very good support for this going all the way back to November. Uh, could be good for just a, a nice trade. Besides, you got two dollars of risk in this thing. I mean, you're you're giving up two bucks. Just if you those two dollars lower, just just stop out of the thing. But its next resistance is all the way here at thirty five. I, I mean, damn, that's just that that's just attractive risk versus reward. I don't know what else to say. I mean, this should be called like the risk versus reward video. I mean, all of these are set up. So I did say like a couple of weeks ago that if the if the market was going to turn, we need to be aggressive with this because. Some of you may have lost some money given a, a substantial amount of this back. So you're going to have to earn this. And I think you've got the viewpoints that you need to, to, to get long here. So Fubo, I like. How about PayPal? I'm going to give you even more than five. I'm just going to keep punching through these. Same thing here. I mean, they all look the same. Just pick your poison. You know, if I don't mention something, just you can always do one yourself. Here, long here, stop here. Target here, 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 much like PayC. Pretty simple and straightforward. Don't overcomplicate it. And another cheap one here for you. Tiger, T-I-G-R. I do like the Tiger. A little more aggressive here. Some of these cheap stuff. I'm gonna look at look how nuts this thing went. This is certainly overbought and needed to be corrected, by the way. Now you're down here, right into support. Pretty good. Above the 200 moving average, just came out of earnings. That's behind them. Uh, again, here you got 1791 with a 15 stop ish, or maybe a little bit below that. So you got about three bucks total in this. First target is 25, so that's good. Next target's 38 up here. So my list includes the NASDAQ itself. You have Coop, Vuzi, Pacey, Okta, Fubo, PayPal, Tiger. I mean, there's going to be a lot. I even think Apple Apple fits that. Neo that I talked about yesterday. They're all going to fit in, in that. Here's my thing about, you know, when you're picking individual stocks like this, maybe the market rallies and somebody does not. But I think when you're looking at this right here, the, the NASDAQ is being resilient. And it looks like it's ready to make a multi-day move. So let's not think about all-time highs. Let's just think about some value here where people want to pick up some of this this stuff right because it's on the cheap they or they consider it's being on the cheap some of them had 30 to 40 percent sell-offs i think when we're basing here on some of these like you look at a pay c that's been sideways for the last three to four trading sessions when you have something like that it's, it, it's just straightforward and that's really what trading has always been about it's through risk versus reward now you're not always guaranteed to get your reward but if you take it from a risk standpoint where you have minimal risk into a trade and you're not outlaying much, you should always look at that as a positive, not, not the fact that you maybe end up losing on that trade, but you should look at it from the standpoint that you're taking such small risks that you can, you can afford to be wrong on a lot of these. So let me just give you a really quick training example for those that stuck around this long in a video. Let's say we bought all six of these. You know, if we gave up ten dollars on all, all all of these these trades, right? We were really tight with our stops. You know, we we would only lose sixty dollars total per share if we took them all. Now that's a lot, obviously, right? You know, but if one of those hit for forty or fifty, right, or seventy or whatever, hundred dollars a share or some, you know, you follow what I'm saying? Risk versus reward. 
you know, and out of that, you should win at least a couple. So by having great risk management first, going from that standpoint first will save you guys mercy, right? It will save you from being destroyed and destructed. As I always said in the past, there's no such thing as a bad trade if you use a stop. So I think what we're looking at now here is I'm not saying that these things are the perfect setup, but they do look good enough from risk versus reward where we should probably take a few of these. So that's what I'm going to do. I've already picked up a few of these positions. We'll see how they play out through the remainder of the week. As always, if you guys need help, feel free to reach out to me. All my contact information, my live trading community, and anything you need to know about me is down there in the description box. I appreciate your support. Take care. I'll talk to you soon.